All right, so let's talk about density of states. Again, that's in the context of uh, band structure, where we uh, have learned about uh, a constant energy surface. And if you will, we, what we're going to study is how many states live on a sliver of constant energy uh, in, a, in, a, in an area of constant energy approximately. So we're going up and down in energy slightly in an infinitesimal size, and we want to measure how many K states are in that uh, little sliver. All right, so density of states, we know that per band we have a certain number of states, depending on the discretization. So we have n states per band, but uh, those are just the bands where electrons can be, right? Only a fraction uh, of the, these bands and these states are really occupied. For example, up here, the upper bands here, there's uh, typically no electrons in there. And we'll study later, or we discussed in an earlier section, that full bands are also not all that important because there's no electron flow in it. So it, what's really important is how many states are occupied in a given band. And that is really easily, uh, more easily calculated if you have an understanding of how many states are available in a certain sliver of energy. So if I fill up states according to some temperature, I want to know how many states do I uncover uh, in a certain energy sliver. And so I can perform integrals uh, uh, along those states more easily. And that is what the density of states is about. All right, so let's consider the question, if I have a dispersion diagram like this, how many states lie in this energy segment here that is delta E wide? Okay, I want to know how many states are in there. That corresponds to a slab of K states that are inside of that slab of energy. Okay, so that energy, that K space is delta K wide. Okay? All right, so we want to count the number of states that are in that little uh, rectangle here in the middle. Well, oops, there's two of those. That's important to know. And we need to know what is the separation between these little, these number of states so we can count them in the, in the x direction. And the separation between states is 2 pi over Na. Okay? So we have two of these um, uh, uh, bluish slabs, so that's the number two here, and we have a box that is delta k wide, and we have states that are separated by little delta k with each other. So that's the number of uh, k states that are in this slab, um, and delta k is 2 pi over Na. What is Na? Na is the length of our system. In this case, it's a one-dimensional system. It's a 1D chain. It's length capital N times A. So that's the L, uh, the length of the system. If you will, that's the one-dimensional volume of the structure we're considering. All right, so we can put in the, the volume or the length of the system. And that means the number of states that are in this energy range is capital L over pi times delta K. All right, so let's divide this through the energy uh, uh, slab here. So we want to make this differentially small and calculate the differential number of states in the system. And uh, we divide by the volume, and that gives us our density of states here in a discretized form where we say, well, we, we're going to um, have a finite number n of states. Now, obviously, you can make this computationally and conceptually infinitesimally small, especially if you consider n as an extremely large number, where um, the, the separation delta k 2 pi over n a becomes in, infinitesimally small as well. All right, so, so far so good. Density of states is, in general, defined like this. 
And there's no approximations here. This is just a definition in one dimension, like this. All right, so now comes the uh, uh, assumption. Uh, we're basically throwing away all of this discreteness of states and the counting of states, and we're going to assume that our dispersion looks like this. It's a perfect parabola characterized by a single effective mass and one energy offset. Okay? E equals E naught plus H bar square K square over 2M star. Okay? So that's the assumption for a typical band that we're going to consider. And you'll see this assumption uh, floating throughout the whole course. So you can, at this stage, if you need to calculate the differential dk over dE, you can solve your assumption for k. So you just take the same equation and resolve it for, for k. And you have uh, the square root of 2m e minus e naught over h bar. Again, this is an expression that has now occurred multiple times in the course. It's the propagation constant of an electron in, uh, in a semiconductor, uh, given that it has a certain effective mass. This is just a recurring element, so you can certainly build your first uh, differential against that, dk dE, and you get the expression here on the right. So the, the key message here is, the density of states in 1D is 1 over pi square root of m star divided by 2h bar square e minus e naught. And the real key message to take away here, aside from all the coefficient, is that the density of states in one dimension is proportional to the inverse square root of e. Okay, so how would that look in energy space? So what we've done is we collapse the number of states in slivers here in K space, like this, and now we can plot it. So as it goes as uh, m star over e minus e zero um, as a square root. So this uh, thing certainly has a pole here at e zero. And then it decays as a function of one over square root of e. And that means the higher you go in energy, the less states you have, and most states in 1D are piled up close to E0. Now, for different bands, like the valence band below, the dispersion looks flipped in a sense. Again, it has a, a pole here, say at EV now, and we would call this an EC typically. And you have a density of states that has a spike close to the very top of the conduction uh, valence band, and the states get less as you uh, go up in energy, or down in energy for the whole. Okay. Now, we always said that the number of states in a system, is, in, or in, a, in a band, is constant. It depends on the discretization, on your original discretization. There's always n states. Now we're going back a little bit in the uh, counting way. Uh, of counting states, that means a density of states is going to be uh, number one very narrow here for the heavily or strongly bound electrons, but it also means that the integral under these curves must be constant because the total number of states resolved in energy needs to be constant. Now, for a realistic band, unlike these kind of bands that are sketched here, a 1D band structure would probably m look more like this, where this is now the top of the band EC plus some delta E, okay? But in the typical assumptions that we're doing here, we're kind of throwing that away, and we're just going with parabolic bands. And those would look just like that. All right. Now, for a 2D system, I'm going to leave it up to you to, to show that the density of states is independent of energy. So you could say that the density of states in 2D is proportional to, to e to the zeroth power. And compare that to the 1D density of states that's proportional to the minus one-half power. Now we're going to go into a 3D case and calculate density of states there. So let's consider a chunk of material that has a height, a width, and a length. 
and we have determined that, well, we're assuming that it's a cubic structure, perfect cube. We know what the reciprocal cell is. It's also a cube. It has a k-space representation of two, uh, and discretization with 2 pi over h, 2 pi over width, 2 pi over l. And now we have a full reciprocal space of the physical space. And now the question arises is, how many states are in a sliver of k uh, energy? Okay, so let's consider a full volume of a, um, of a sphere. And now we're going to consider how many states are in the sliver around that uh, 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 sphere. Okay, so here you see the volume, here is the volume of k cubed, 4 pi, 4 over 3 pi k cubed is the volume of a, of a sphere of radius k. Now, if we make uh, the radius slightly larger, k plus delta k, um, that's um, 4 over 3 pi k plus delta k cubed. And we want to know the difference in k volume between those two. So we take the difference, and that is normalized in the, to the overall k space volume, which is 2 pi over l, 2 pi over w, 2 pi over l, h. And we get in 3D that the states between a certain energy sliver, E plus uh, delta E and E1, is uh, V over 2 pi square, K square over 2K. All right. So in this sliver, we asked ourselves how many states are in that sliver, assuming that we have a spherical density of states. So we have one effective mass. Okay. So now we can... Uh, determine this per unit energy. We can divide this expression by a delta E. And again, if we assume that we have a parabolic dispersion like this, we can calculate uh, K again, like in the previous slide, and we can differentiate dK dE like this. All right? So we have the same 1 over square root of E uh, behavior. But we have outside a factor of k squared because it's a three-dimensional system. So the density of states is this volume. If you normalize it by the volume, get rid of this guy. 2 pi h bar squared k squared dk dE. And then you have an expression for the density of states per unit volume. And what you find is that that is proportional to square root of E. Okay? So that's the thing to walk away from is in 3D, the density of states is proportional to E uh, square root or E to the 1 half. Uh, in 2D, it's E to the 0. And in 1D, it's 1 over square root of E. All right. Now, the density of states in 3D is the square root as a function of energy. So these are square root functions here. And that means in three dimensions, at the conduction band edge, you have very few states. And as you go up in energy, differentially, you obtain more and more states. And that is what you see here. So here is your typical conduction band edge. And here is your valence band edge. So it's the flipped um, equivalent. And again, here you have a deep lying band. And this is not shown uh, proportional to scale, right? So the density, the number of states in these, all these bands must be constant. And just as I made my remark earlier, in a realistic system that is not perfectly parabolic but has a, 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 a more realistic shape to it, that might more look like this. Your band has a top that might be an EC plus some delta then the density of states will eventually close up again and come to zero. So you will fill up bands like these, and you have a density of states in a certain energy range. But for practical devices, especially traditional larger semiconductor devices, it is good enough to deal with a, a parabolic dense, uh, um, dispersion 
and the density of states here that is proportional to square root of e and the function you'll learn to appreciate is e equals e0 plus h bar square k square over 2m star. This formula will follow you around for a while. Uh, if you do these classical devices uh, that I operate, uh, described by a single effective band. All right, so really that um, concludes the sort of tools of the trade and we can begin to expand all of this now into real materials and real material descriptions which we will do in the next section. Thank you.